And the real, the, <laughs> the real thing is the beta game behind the whole thing, right? If you really think about it, guys really don't even want to put up with women nowadays. They are so lazy. They'd rather lead with their wallet than lead with their mind. And that's just the facts so of true. it. It just, it makes me. <laughs> She's like, what the hell? <laughs> As a him. single mom with three kids, whenever a guy leads with his wallet and I'm talking to Damn. him. <laughs> it's an instant turn off for me because I feel so inferior. I shop at Plato's Closet. You know, I'm a garage sale mom. You're like, like normal and he's kid, like trying to be better yeah, than normal. Yeah, like sometimes I can't pay my internet bill. And so this guy's out there like, <laughs> oh, I did this and I did this. And I'm like, he's a brokey. Cool. So, yeah. um, so you like broke dudes. I mean, I don't like broke dudes. I, I don't, I don't, it's not a requirement for me. I like somebody that, I think you can have a lot of money and mismanage it. And I think you can not have a lot of money and manage it well. So I think it's how a man manages his money and his hustle is what is attractive to me. Because I, my ex-husband's a firefighter and he's a reservist in the National Guard, works his dick off seven days a week. I'm an ER nurse. So it's not about a dollar amount. I think you can have the same amount of money and put it to use in the right ways and have the same outcome as this millionaire that's getting taxed differently. But mm -hmm. it's not attractive when I sit at the table and a man's like, I did this and I went to this and I went to this uh -huh. concert, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, yeah, but cool. It, yeah, I but, bought my shoes at Salvation Army yesterday. Yeah, but see, in a committed relationship, she should not have to work or worry about anything. <laughs> what, is that hard for you to understand? Yeah, uh, yeah. Dude, seriously, think about it like this, okay? You know, I mean, if you're in a committed relationship, it is my duty as your as your man, as your guy. Like, if you were my girl, I mean, you would not have to want or need anything. It's all taken care of. That's just very hard to achieve today. And that's yeah. why relationships are so much harder, though. Right? And, so, and so the moral of the story is, and see, you have that look on your face like, well, how does that even work? I know, because I – that's – yeah. And see, like this girl over here, she's like, well, I'm, I'm super independent. And see, that would never work with a guy like me because, see, if I wanted a committed relationship with you and I committed to you and I gave you all of my provisioning and security and time and attention. And devotion. Yeah, 100% to you, but you were independent. How does that even work? You're trying to lead the relationship. And, and, and so here's the deal, right? If you really look at it like this, if you're unwilling to give authority to a man, then... How can that man then be responsible for you? They're making me cry. <laughs> I mean, think about it for a second because that's the problem, right? Is most girls, they say, there's no way, there's absolutely no way in hell I'm going to submit or be led by a man because I'm independent. So my boyfriend is actually the first man my whole life that has taken care of me. In the past six months, I've been able to step back and he's done exactly that. And that was the look on my face when you said that because I was like, yeah, okay, I finally see that, and I finally have had that modeled for me. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, it's it's shocking, and it's hard when you grow up and you struggle. And then, like her, like she's taking care of her goddaughter, and it's mm -hmm. like, that's a hard concept to think of when you're hustling, you're working, you're Whenever you're off, so independent that you can't even fathom it, yeah. But it's not even independent, it's necessity. Like, she's got to keep the lights on. on. My thing is, if you can come in, and I'm not going to say sit me down, but have that, give me that security to be like, well, let me step back. You got it. But I'm still going to do my part because I don't want you to have everything on your plate. Yeah, you're, good. you're a hustler. Still, you're, let you're, me still yeah. do what I need to do because at the end of the day, if you come home, you're paying all the bills to make sure the kids fed, all that. Well, then it's my it's my duty to make sure the house is clean. Or you're cooking. Yeah. I'm cooking. I'm doing everything. So when you come home. Everything's in care of. That's it's, that's precisely right. You know, if he's out there, he's out there fighting the world and swinging the sword for your tribe, then you are taking care of the home, the children, and you're furthering his mission, right? You're supporting what he wants to do, his greatness, because his greatness nets you all the wins in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's the point, right? Is But the problem is, is most girls, they don't want that in this day and age. See, that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of these females nowadays, they don't know how to take care of a man. That's just like some of these men don't know how to take care of a woman. Well, I, I actually think a lot of women know how to do it. I think that society no, puts them in position some to. Of them don't. Well, well yeah, it's, it's, yeah, some of them don't. But I think a lot of them, if they have a good, if they've grown up in a normal household, they they know and like they know they know it deep down. Like a lot of people like to know deep down what we really are supposed to be okay but the thing is it's just really hard to do that when there's very few men that put you in that position i always like to say 
a woman falls into a role when a man is in his role. Mm -hmm. But how many men are in their role? I truly believe that if you met the right guy that was able to fully put you into that position where you could let go of everything and let him fully take over everything, I think that you would love to do it and you would do it in a heartbeat. It's just how many guys can do that? A a very small amount. And then of those small amount, how many of them are loyal? And that that's the hardest thing. And then like this, this is going to sound horrible, but in the black community, it's really hard for, it's really, really hard for women in the black community. Because if you, I I preach very hard interracial dating on this show, very hard because for the black community, if you're a black girl and you really want to be with a black man, he's going to have more options. Black men are the most desired on dating apps. Okay. So they're going to, they, they have Asians, white girls, Hispanics all going after them. Okay. So if you, if you don't want, if you don't want a guy that cheats, it sounds horrible, but you need to think about interracial dating. You need to think about going to other races because black men are highly sought after sexually. I'm not saying they're all trying to steal your man for a relationship. They're just trying to steal your man to fuck them, though. And so, like, I just heavily preach that if you're that type of person, you either need to accept the cheating, possibly downgrade the type of guys that you want, like not go for the top 10 percent, dude, or try interracial dating. Like, I'm telling you, like, it, it, th- these are all, like, very good solutions to this issue. And I've had a lot of black women on this panel. I had one girl that married a white dude, like, three months ago, or she, or he got propo- he proposed to her. So, and it was because I gave her this interracial dating talk. Like, there's certain things, there's certain solutions to these things. You don't have to be single or, like, be alone the, your whole life, you know? And, like, sometimes you can get digmatized or stuck in a cycle with the wrong dudes for too long when really that guy that really would have loved you and showed devotion and done everything for you walked right past you and you ignored him because maybe he was mexican or he was white or something you know or like he was boring or he was boring you know like or he didn't make he wasn't that guy you know and like man it's not going to be worth it when you're 60 and you're alone like it's the saddest demographic is 45 women uh, that are single and and lone you know the saddest demographic people is 45 and older single women Mm -hmm. so like don't don't end up being one of those people in that demographic Mm -hmm. I'm just patiently waiting. Now, nah, you're young. You're 21. So honestly, a lot of the girls here, I push like the wall on and I'm like, yo, watch out. The wall hits you at a certain point. Like, I don't know when the wall hits, but it's sometime in between like 30 and 35 for most women. And yeah, you definitely don't want to wait too long because you can, you can you can take it too far. I, I got a question, actually. Yeah, go for it. Because <clears throat> I, I do hear that often on our show where ladies would say something like, oh, I, I'm waiting or I'm patiently waiting. During this buffer buffer period, what are you doing to – improve yourself to put you in a better situation to get the man that you want good question well with me i guess because i'm not like I, like i said i'm dating but i'm not looking so i feel like that's another one of my problems i'm not out there just looking for it because i'm so stuck on i gotta get my business i'm working on my money i'm hustling so it's like that is one of my problems that i don't really care enough to be like okay well if well if you want to go on a date let's go well, i'm more so um, we gonna have to wait. Yeah, because you're always busy. Yeah, and, and I don't, I don't set the time with... out to actually yeah. do it. And some of these guys, they don't understand. They be like, "Well, if y'all want to make time, I make time for who and what I want to make time for." Mm. So if, if you get my attention enough for me to make time for you, oh, then I'm gonna make some time for you. Mm. But if you don't give me that energy mm. for me, if you ain't if you ain't applying enough pressure, then I'm not fit to make a way. Most men will just look the other way if you and say, "Hey, can. you gotta wait." You know, and that's yeah. the thing, right? It was, that's the you point, ain't applying though. enough pressure then. So yeah. I, I actually so like, but but those guys. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay. but like that guy that like like the guys that you might maybe like see around or have casual sex with. You know, like do you like leave them to those same standards? But like I like I said, it's as if I'm ta- the only way I'm gonna have casual sex with you is if I'm if I see us going into a further relationship. Like, like, you, you yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I would guess that the guys that you have sex with, you would like to become something serious. Yes, if not yeah. already, like yeah. that's, that's when you have an understanding on my schedule. You have an understanding on what I do. Oh, man. You have that. Understanding. You just, you just, got, I'm, I'm about to teach you something though, about just sex and just relationships in general. You don't have the leverage when you give up the sex, you have no leverage. Okay. At all. One of the biggest things I teach on this channel is for women to be celibate. And to stop sleeping mm-hmm. around. Because if, as soon as you give up the pussy, he wins. It's game over. You're never going to win after that. And that's the thing. Never. I don't mind going. St- like, I I've trust and believe. I don't have to have it. No, I've been. I, I've been. Girls, like, I think the longest the, I've been was like three, four years. Gr- girls are the gatekeepers of sex. But Men no, are the gatekeepers of relationships. Sex? That's not hard. So can you repeat that, Phil? I said uh, women are the gatekeepers of sex, period. Okay. You guys have all the power before sex. 
but men are the gatekeepers of relationships. Mm-hmm. So okay. here's the deal. The, the moral of the story is the more you have a guy wait that's got his stuff together, you know, he's not going to wait. He's going to move on to the next. Because like I said, girls are like buses. Another one will come along shortly. The moral of the story is you're going to find yourself waiting into your later, later years for the right guy to come along, right? So how do you problem solve that? I mean, being celibate for three or four years, I commend you. Then what, what stopped it? Well, I guess I thought I've sent, well, I ain't going to say that. I can say like the reason why I probably, uh, the reason why I did stop it is because I actually was attracted mentally and physically to that person. But so this guy that you're, that, that says, Hey, you're going to have to, you're going to have to hear to my schedule. And these are the terms to see me. Basically he lets you run the relationship instead of saying, no girl, hold on. This is when I'm able to see you. And this is how it's going to be in our relationship. If you want to see me, he basically lets you push him into that position. So he's beta. He's soft. No. And so you like that control aspect in that relationship with him. And the crazy part about it is <laughs> I really don't like having control in the relationship. But do you see how you control yeah. it? No. Well, so like the really sad thing is sometimes these guys are like so beta today that like, Y'all are going to end up with control because these guys are so used to like giving it to the women. And like maybe the they were thing. raising a single mother household or something. They tapped, man. I They're tapped out. Yeah. <laughs> one, two, three. It's over. I yeah, want to be submissive in a relationship because for one, that's my role is to be submissive in a relationship. So I want a man to come in and say, this is what we're going to do. Baby girl, no man is going to compete with your oh, job. No. Hey y'all, Sergio here. I just want to mention I've created a completely free guide that shows you exactly how I went from having low confidence and being painfully awkward around women to easily meeting and dating numerous high quality desirable women in real life without the use of any dating apps or social media. So if you're struggling to get out there, if you have approach anxiety or don't know what to say or how to interact with women to make them want you and are sick of using dating apps with low value girls that hundreds of other guys have been chatting with, click the link in the description below to grab your free guide right now. And if you want private mentorship with me personally to help guide you every step of the way in this process, check out my mentorship program in the description too. I would be happy to help you reach your dating goals and overcome any obstacle you may face. And trust me, if I can do it, you can do it too. I hope to see you soon. Peace out.